Yes, he that is. Guy raise. <laughs> uh, if you got a, I'm all for it. <laughs> uh, if you got a question for Brad, go ahead use the raise hand tool. Uh, if you need access to record, just let me know that as well. Uh, David Hood, you are up first. Go ahead. Well, I guess first I would need to unmute, wouldn't I? Hey, Coach, how are you? Good. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Uh, just two things. Number one, it, it would be obviously everybody knows, hey, that that top four spot still kind of right there in play for you guys. But, you know, you, you can't focus on that. How do you as a coach, and is it easier with an older team like this, to just kind of focus on one game at a time? Like it just like literally all we are focused on is, is pit right now. Yeah. I don't think it's um, I think our guys, our older guys, especially know, I mean, PJ and Joe and chase and those guys, they, they know um, what it's like to have that finish in the top four. Hey, at the end of the day, we're just trying to do the best we can. We want to finish as high in the league as we can. So um, that kind of goes without saying. So, yeah, I, I think your, your job as the coach is to just, you know, get your guys ready for the next next week, next game. Um, and we talk about that every Sunday, right? Sunday or Monday, whenever we get together, here's our week, here's our plan, here's where we are, here's what, you know, what's happened, transpired in the last week. What do we what have we learned from it? And how do we go go forward accordingly? Obviously, Pitt playing great. Jeff's done a terrific job there, not just this year, but uh kind of resurrecting the program. You know, I've coached against Jeff a long time. So have a lot of respect for him. And certainly our guys' full attention is going to be on Pitt. They're playing playing exceptionally well. And then that was going to be my next question. And watching them, maybe maybe, maybe it's it's wrong on my part, but but when I watch them, I see a scrappy team. Uh, yeah. you know, I see a team that's going to kind of fight you tooth and nail for loose ball rebound, that type of thing. Yeah, I think I think you just you just see a really tough, tough-minded group, a group playing with a lot of urgency. Um, very connected uh, offensively. They moved Jalen Lowe to the point, you know, sometime after our first game and uh, probably allowed Carrington a little more freedom to just be a scorer and just take some pressure off of them. Now they got two guys that are very good in the pick and roll consistently. Um, obviously, you've got a first team all conference guy in Henson. He and Joe Girard. You know, there's some other really good shooters, but those guys shoot about as well as anybody and with the kind of range that um, is un unbelievable. Um, and then defensively, as you mentioned, they, I mean, Federico and then uh, the other big kid, those guys, uh, Diaz, those guys are long, athletic, very good defensively. Just uh, Jeff's got a really good group. He's recruited well, the pieces fit, and I think they're playing great basketball. Uh, Steven Thompson, go ahead. Good morning, Coach. Uh, you touched a little bit on how Pitt is different from that first meeting, but how are you guys different uh, from that first game you played back in December against Pitt? Yeah, I don't know. We're a lot different, maybe a little. Um, I think stylistically we're still doing a lot of the same things. Um, you know, we were riding a very good wave at that time. Obviously, we've been knocked down a few more times, and so we've had to deal with some adversity and – uh, proud of the way our guys have have responded after some losses, some heartbreaking losses. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm hopeful that that is going to harden us here down the stretch. But uh, in terms of change of how we're playing or any of that that stuff, we're not really. We haven't done a lot different. We're still kind of who we are. Um, you know, our bench guys. You know, maybe have gotten a little more experience, so I'm hopeful that those guys are going to play well down the stretch. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jerry DePaula, go ahead. Uh, good, good morning, Coach. Uh, I was just wondering what, uh, in, in your view, what the ACC can do to prevent the happenings like happened at the Wake Forest on Saturday from reoccurring. Yeah, I don't know. It's a hard one, right? I was asked about this after the game the other night. We all love the court storming because of the experience for the, the college kids, the players to be with their students, the students to be with the players. Obviously, we can't have we can't have players getting hurt. Uh, and I, my concern is we're going to have a situation where a player in fear of safety, somebody's going to push them or get up in their face, and a player's going to do something to a fan too. I think you know. So there's a lot of concern. I think we have to do something. I don't have a great answer. I have heard some folks talk about you know 
Do we need some sort of 20 or 30 second shot clock that you're putting up to, to make the fans aware that, hey, you could storm the court, but we got to get 20 seconds to get the, the opponents off the floor. Um, you know, I don't know if that could work. I love it in concept because I love the idea of, of the home team being able to still celebrate a great experience with their student body. Um, but player safety is, is number one. And, uh, you know, there's, I don't know how you hire enough people to, to keep, keep students from rushing the floor. That, that seems crazy. We need to have the security around the opposing team, you know, get the, you, maybe you can put it a small enough people around the opposing team to protect them. You still got to get the players off the court, which is, uh, you know, certainly part of the challenge and, and, I don't know where a shot clock or something would come in play. That's those are the only thoughts I have. Uh, Jeff Hathorn, go ahead, sir. Morning, Brad. Um, we were talking to Jeff earlier, and he said that Ian might be the best glue guy in the conference. I think he had 17 boards in that first matchup against Pitt. What does he mean to your team? Yeah, I'm just really proud of him. He's uh, a guy that has just worked and worked to become a really good player. Um, and he, you know, he's the epitome of what our program's about. Clemson grit, just battling through things and and working to get better, believing in yourself and and trusting in your process and your race. Um, he's obviously a, a really good player. He he's he he can do more than just rebound. He's certainly known for his rebounding, and there's a tremendous appreciation for him, not only from like our fan base, but other coaches and people that follow basketball that that watch a kid who is getting that many things done, you know, through sheer will and effort, but he's also a skilled guy. He can pass, he can make a high post three. I mean, he's, he's really worked on his game. He's improved at driving the ball. He's, he's a better dribbler. He's a better defender. Um, you know, he's an experienced guy that has been in our program three years and every year has taken a step forward. And certainly when you're playing alongside Joe Girard and Chase Hunter and PJ Hall, three, three guys that, are super talented and all can score. Your job is to find a way to to help that team win, and certainly rebounding is one way that he's done that. Um, but for us to really be elite, we need him to be, you know, opportunistic offensively as well. And uh, you know, he 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 does a really nice job for us. I'll go back to David Hood. Uh, with this recent, you know, you guys are are playing really well right now. To me. Talk about guys playing well. Chase Hunter is kind of the, the crux of it. And it seems like he's been, uh, over the past four or five games, maybe more of that drive into the lane and, and create shots there and assist rather than the three-point shooting Chase Hunter. Has that been kind of a key you know point for your offense is kind of getting him back to, to where he's that, that creative guy? A little bit, but I, I think him making threes has been significant, too, because early in the year he was just struggling from three. And I kept telling everybody he's a much better shooter than his stats, and eventually water's going to find level. He's going to make shots. And, and last week he shot the ball very well from three. And so when he does that, obviously that continues to space the court, makes it easier for us to get it inside, do different things. But at the same time, he does have to get in the lane and make plays, as you mentioned. He does have to – to stay aggressive for us um, and just his continued improvement, um, decision-making, uh, aggressiveness of knowing when to drive, when to throw it in the post, when to, when to take a shot. You know, he's a guy that's had to learn how to become a point guard over the last year and a half. And I think he's doing a really good job of it. And uh, certainly his improved consistency, especially from the three has helped our team tremendously here the last couple of weeks. How much did that do for his confidence Saturday there before the half where he kind of does a little bit of a head fake, steps back, and then just yep. calmly drains it? Yeah, I don't know if it was just that shot. I think his his confidence has been building in the last several weeks. He's had a couple of games where he really shot it well. Miami late in the game, he made some big threes. He played great at Georgia Tech and had a great mix to his game, made some threes, got in the lane and scored. Um and certainly continued that, as you mentioned, with a really big, big time shot there at halftime. Um, I think that's the second time this year that he's he's made a big time three right before the halftime buzzer for us. So uh, I just think it's been a buildup uh, of of Chase's confidence, probably all all coming together here in the last two to three weeks. 
Uh, last question will come from David Teal. Brad, any good stories from Wilmington versus VCU and you and Jeff? <laughs> oh, wow. No, nothing, nothing. I don't have anything that's, uh, you know, we got along pretty well. Um, he was a young coach. I was a young coach. So I think there was a kinship there that, uh, you know, we both had our hands full, but uh, it was fun uh, just competing against those guys. I think we always had a lot of respect. Obviously, Jeff's dad being the coach at Old Dominion and then Jerry Wainwright, me working for Coach Wainwright at Wilmington and those guys, you know, having a long relationship, Coach Wainwright and Coach Coach uh, Capel. Um, so there was always a kinship back when I was an assistant. We had a lot of respect for Old Dominion back in the day and had big battles between ODU and and uh, Clint, or excuse me, uh, Wilmington. And then obviously Jeff takes over at BCU and I get the job. And so there was just, there's a friendship that's been there a long time. It, it's based on respect and uh, just being good guys, right? Just being the right kind of guy in, in the job and, and the way you treat people and go about your business when you compete against each other. Um, we just have a lot of respect for each other and I'm really happy to see what Jeff's done. He's done an unbelievable job at Pitt. Brad, thank you. Appreciate it.